From the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls, microphone maniacs of all ages, it's time to shoot out the Soyuz 017FET and the Soyuz 1973. Let's get it on. And I'm going to do the whole episode in this voice, for a particular reason. Now the Soyuz 017FET, forged in the hearth of Tone Mountain, drenched in butter, sweet, sweet butter. This is a tone that I call vintage beautiful. It evokes the sound of a vintage U87. Mm. It just has a beautiful round sound. It's really nice. And then there's the new kid on the block, the Soyuz 1973, right in your face. This mid-forward sound was purpose-built for broadcast. It's really, it's very immediate. And I'll tell you why that's really important. There's a distinction in my mind that I call news versus music. And it's psychologically how I determine what tool to use for which project. Now, music. Music is a form of art that primarily relies on your previous life experiences for you to feel what the artist wants you to feel. It evokes emotion based upon nostalgia or paranoia or basically really digging into your mind and shaping what you hear in a way that you feel something. But it all has to do with what you've already done in your life or things that you've experienced through the eyes of other artists. But news, news is immediate. News is something you need to know right now. News has to happen in the moment. So it's not about telling you a story. It's not about once upon a time. It's about this right here, right now. So when I'm telling you news, right, news is something you want to know today, not tomorrow. If I'm telling you about, now in commercials, if I'm telling you about a solution to a problem, do you need health insurance? That's a problem you need a solution to sooner than later, right now, not tomorrow. So the immediacy of this sound is really important in the distinction of what I would use it for. Now, if I'm on a narration and I want you to relax and really listen to what I'm saying, like, again, a story, I'm telling you a story, whether it's a brand story or a story on how you, um, you know, how you uh, effectively, uh, successfully uh, enable a process, right? Like an explainer. Explainers are stories, right? It's all like entertainment. And it relies on you knowing, really having a foundational uh, understanding of what it is that I'm telling you about, right? If I'm doing a narration about uh, cybersecurity, it pretty much relies on you having some kind of uh, experience with cybersecurity, knowing what it is, or really having to figure out what it is. But if I'm telling you a commercial, if I'm giving you, again, if I'm telling you about a concert, if I'm telling you about a job fair, if I'm telling you about a sale, right? These are immediate things you need to know. This feels more like in the room with you, right? This feels more like I'm in a dream with you. So news versus music is really a shorthand in my mind of how I distinguish one microphone from another in terms of usage. So. Again, if I'm reading an audiobook, that's music. If I am doing a promo, a promo wants you to do something right now or take note of this right now. And the mid forward nature of this microphone demands attention. Now, it all comes down to the capsule, really. The Soyuz 017 FET has a version of a K67 in it, really a premium version. And so it does have. A very, it has a mid forward sound, but it's more relaxed when you compare it to this. This is right up in your face. There's no doubt about it. And what they've done is they've taken the bomblet capsule, which isn't necessarily a very forward and aggressive capsule. It's not a forward and aggressive sound. And they've created this resonator ring that sits in front of the capsule. It's really genius. It uses physics. Physics, baby. And what this resonator ring 
that's attached to the front of the capsule does is it redirects certain frequencies directly to the capsule and deflects others in a way that really goes beyond my mere understanding of physics. And somehow it creates this very mid-forward broadcast-friendly sound that really will translate quite well on playback devices of, of all, of really all quality. So remember, remember the old Oratone speakers, <laughs> those crappy little box things that you'd have to mix on just to make sure that your stuff sounded good on any boombox or crappy car radio? Well, I think that the iPhone, or basically any phone, your speakers on the phone, really are the new Oratones. Not your headphones, not earbuds, but just speakers, right? Your freaking Alexa speaker, whatever it is. Everything still has to sound very good and intelligible on that speaker. But music, of course, can be a little bit more soft. And when I say soft, I mean the transients don't have to be as snappy. It really has to make you feel comfortable, feel happy, right? News is almost something that, I don't want to say it creates anxiety, but the immediacy of it is psychologically it almost, uh, uh, look, it almost makes you feel uncomfortable, right? Because it's stuff that you have to deal with. You're actually processing new information in a way. It's not, I'm not evoking old feelings so much as I'm giving you new information to process. And I'm doing it in such a way that feels immediate. So it's like you are psychologically almost on a defensive. Like you're like, whoa, right? As this information is coming at you, you're parsing it so fast that the only thing you can think about is that information coming at you and perhaps how it pertains to some kind of fear of loss or fear that you're not cool enough or fear that you really don't know where to get your health insurance. So there is something about this that I think is supposed to make you feel in the moment. So maybe it gives you anxiety in a little bit, just a tiny bit. But remember, your job as a voiceover artist is to deliver the emotional impact of the message in a way that it creates the listener to respond and do and act. Right. So, what do you think so far? The Soyuz 0 and 7 FET and the Soyuz 1973. Two great microphones. And I think that because they are very different, they offer two different aspects of the sonic palette of VO. I think there's definitely a place in my locker for both of them. They're both going to get a lot of use. And not just, and the Soyuz ON7 FET will be used on commercials too. But certain ones, like I think especially like I do a bunch of, I do a lot of commercials. And some of them are streaming audio commercials. And those, I think, would sound really good with this. I think the immediacy of it really has a, is a change of pace from when the music stops playing and all of a sudden my voice jumps forward, right? Same thing, same kind of thing you hear on the radio all the time. And they do that through all kinds of, they do that through heavy compression. So the immediacy of it is important. Don't forget that. But the tone here, hmm. Mm, so good. All right. I think I've talked myself out. Oh, one more thing. So, the reason I'm using this voice through the entire episode, and it's really just a more aggressive version of my natural voice. I'm just really pushing through my resonance just a little bit more. And the reason for that is I wanted you to hear. I wanted to stay mid-range consistent really through the, the whole episode, so that you can really hear where the difference is. Because the difference here is really in the mid-range. I mean, the low end, obviously. But even when, when I do it like this, when I talk aggressively like this, it doesn't feel like it loses its balls. It feels like it's really in your face. Now, here's the thing. This sound, this mid-forward aggressive sound, is going to maybe be a little bit uh, too much for some projects. So this is not necessarily the microphone you're going to use 
on a lot of stuff, but for what it does, it does it brilliantly. And for me, I'll tell you why. Now, I have a nasal, nasal resonance, and not my chesty resonance. My, there's a nasal, and you can almost hear the cutting edge of it here. So that, right? So on a 47 style capsule, that sound, which really centers around, there's kind of a resonance around 600. It kind of blows it up in a honky, squonky way that sounds terrible. So I'd sound terrible on a 47 style capsule. But what this does is, and I think it's the resonator ring that's doing it. This resonator ring, right? The sound that goes into the ring pushes this mid-forward thing. And it's almost like it reaches up into my nasal cavity, like right up into my nose, digging for gold, and it finds it. Because it takes that little bit of honky squonky nasalness and it blends it into my chest tone, right? Without without the low end, the really big low end behind it. Now, you can't necessarily hear it. Now that I pointed it out, you can probably hear that tone a little bit more here, but it feels more relaxed. It's not so aggressive, right? But here, you can really feel that cutting edge of that sound. And that, to me, is the brilliance of this microphone because it offers me a, a different sonic palette by carving out a spot in my voice that really normally I, I wouldn't think would be something I would want uh, out there up front. But it does it in a way that really benefits my voice or my delivery on this microphone. All right. What do you think? The Soyuz 017 Fed. Beauty personified. It looks like a work of art. It sounds like a work of art. The Soyuz 1973. It looks like a tin can. But it sounds amazing. And this to me is the true TLM 107 killer. And we're going to have to shoot it out against the BCM 104. I'll tell you that much. But I need to know what you're thinking. I need to know. Did this shootout of the Soyuz 017 Fed and the Soyuz 1973, did it surprise you? Is it what you expected? Leave a comment. All right, until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, fading to black.